What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is episode number four of the Black Boar Full Motion Rebuild. Let's get to it. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to check out the previous episodes to this rebuild. Um, the last episode we actually went ahead and tore the front end completely apart to have access to the engine and then we actually dropped the gearbox and the um, transfer of case as well. So now we have access to the intake manifold which we'll be removing today, the valve cover will be removed today and so will the side covers for the timing chains as well. We may also be taking off the timing chains uh, so I'll be showing you guys how to time the engine to remove the timing chains properly um, and also we might even drop the oil as well and drop the sump and see what else is in there too depending on how bad that damage the guides and chains are so let's get into it. All right, so first things first, the intake manifold has to come off. So we start with the leads, removing them, and all the vac lines attached to the intake manifold as well. Hardware has to come off. So bolts on either side of the intake manifold, all the bolts from the front connecting to the head, a longer Allen attachment is also preferred here. It's quite a tight squeeze. So I'll undo my hand and then go ahead with the impact afterwards to zap them out. And don't forget the one at the back. That is the hardest one to get to, it's a bit tricky. Once it's all undone, remove the dipstick as well, it makes it a lot easier, and then just slowly lift it up. Be careful not to break anything in the process, and she comes free like so. Okay, so the valve cover is next to go, removing the loom, and the vac lines down the side of the engine. The core packs and the brackets can go as well, basically anything that's stopping the valve cover from being removed. Once they're there out of the way, undo the bolts and you can remove the valve cover. Okay, so now the valve goes off, it's next to get these timing chain covers off. So the best thing for me to start with is the easy stuff. So this bracket here, two bolts, so I can access the bolts behind it. I'll take that off. Take off the stem set housing, which has two bolts there and a bolt on the block right there. And then I can take the thermostat housing off as well. Obviously I've got to unplug the sensor and I'll leave the hose on there, take the whole lot of it in one go. Um, it doesn't leak, so I'm not placing any seals for that, which is good. Um, I'll take off the flywheel as well. And once I've got all the covers off, then I can put it up to uh, top dead center. She's toast. Have it guys, it's all pulled apart. Now, I haven't taken one of these apart before. Now, I realize that this is the one that has the, the head gasket 
hanging out here, which makes life a little bit sketchier, but not the worst. Uh, and also, if you can't already tell, this is why I went in there to, to have a look, because this guide is broken. See, it's snapped right there. So now I've got to go ahead and just take it all apart, clean it all up, replace the chains, replace the rest of these tensioners. Look how grubby it is though. I'll get down here and have a look for you guys. It'll make it a little bit easier. So rear man seal is leaking. So that's going to be replaced. And yeah. Oh look. Look at the tensioner. Tensioner snaps in half as well. And there's another part of plastic in there. Alright, so first things first, your harmonic balancer has a mark or a cutout on the wheel, and on the block it has a mark as well. So that is what you need to have lined up first of all. That requires a 27mm socket to turn the crank into the right spot. Secondly, you'll see the cams on the driver's side. You'll have cutout on each end. you also see as well that the lobes are facing towards each other at a 45 degree angle. So now, a bit of plate. I think there's like a four mil, five mil bit of plate. And you can just rest it. Right there and you can push them in now look sometimes they don't line up perfectly so that's when you get over here you have look like a nut that's actually on the actual cam now this is for an adjustment so you can get a spanner so I don't know what the size is but I'm just using an adjustable spanner because my other spanners don't fit you can put it on there and when you can wiggle it you can see whereabouts it needs to go. So back a little bit, and that side's in, and have a look on that side there. It needs to go towards me a tiny bit. So you just try it first and see if it fits. If it doesn't fit, move your spanner, and just get a bit of a crank. Just enough. Yeah, there you go. It's in. I uh, do make sure that it's actually hanging over the edge on each side of the head just so when you're undoing stuff when the cam does move it won't just the bar won't slip out the way all right and there's my spanner on the cam for me to turn it if I need to all right thirdly you have a ground down tooth on the crank on the passenger side of the engine and as you can see it lines up with the join on the lower part of the engine, I think for the crank shaft um, cap. So I always want to make sure that that's lined up as well. And last but not least, the intermediate crank pulleys. They line up with the mark on the back. Now this one here is just a little bit off, but that should be okay. On the back part, and on the front part here, if you can just see behind, it interlocks with that gear as well. So it can only go in one way. So you always want to make sure that that back there is lined up. Now, if you had a keen eye, you would have seen that I had a cable tie over one of the guides as well. Let me show you what I had to do. So, I had a cable tie on here because I actually forgot to tie the engine. So, to prevent the car from skipping a tooth, I actually put a cable tie over the tensioner kind of guide and the guide itself, which holds tension on here for the chain. So, when I rotate the engine by hand, it wouldn't skip a tooth. So that's kind of a little hack that I've, I've learned uh, from YouTube, from other people who have done this as well. It saves me putting the cover back on. But this one here, you be very careful because you do have the head gasket in the way. And the last thing I want to do is just do it true hard and put some pressure on the head gasket and break it and do all that stuff when you don't really want to and that thing's just falling apart like 
like that. And there's one. So again, just be careful of the head gasket. You're not going to be snapping that, and neither do I. There's the guide, and there's your chain. There we go. So, first things first, the tensioner is meant to look like that. Not two piece, it's meant to be one piece. We ain't talking about wheels, we're talking about tensioners. Now, that is just all plastic, obviously, but that was that old and brittle. It snapped in half, so very lucky that it didn't actually skip time. This tensioner here, the guide, sorry, here, I thought the guide was actually in good condition, but once I took the first bolt out, I could see that it's actually split in two pieces, and then once I got it off, look in the back of it, it split all the way. Now, bear in mind, the guy that I bought it from, the mechanic, he told me that he was just going to chuck a clutch in it, that's all it needed, and away you go. Now can you just imagine if I just chucked a clutch in it, drove down the road, or even sold it to someone else, the next minute skipped a time and killed an engine? I would actually feel like shit, to be honest. That's why I'm here doing it. Doesn't look too bad. Obviously, there's your guide, it's missing. Half of it, I reckon the other half or the other quarter, let's say, is in the um, in the sump. I reckon that's where I reckon I've seen it. Now the next step is let's drop that sump, drain the oil, and then drop the sump. Obviously, because I'd make a massive mess, and no one wants to clean that up, not even me. And let's see if we can find the other piece of that guide. it's off thank god for that so note to self make sure you have all the bolts out before you think about trying to take the sump out no wonder it was a bit hard i forgot two on the um clutch side so other than that all good but as you can see inside of here there's the remnants of the old guides and then some in here too, look. Sweet. Alright, so now that's off. I can get that a good clean. The guy, whoever put it on before me, they've used a shit ton of this RTV stuff. So now I need to um, clean it all up. And I'll chuck it all back on the car. Alright guys, I think we're going to end the video here. We've actually done a lot tonight, considering. Uh, we found some more broken parts, which, hey, it is what it is. We're here now, so we may as well replace the parts. Um, they're already broken. They come with the timing chain kit anyway, so let's crack on with it on the next video with the reassembling stage. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you're liking the content so far. Leave a comment down below and share your thoughts and opinions on what you think I'm doing so far. Um, Instagram link will be linked down below as well so give me a follow on there too, that would be awesome and I'll catch you guys on the next episode so thanks again for watching, I'll catch you in the next one